Bring a trailer, cars and bids, Haggerty Marketplace, are they experiencing a complete price implosion? Man, our predictions from the last episode might, uh, that might be evidence that that's in fact what's happening. Will our predictions for the next cars also show the same thing? This is Bid Nerds. The beginning of the show starts now. Bid Nerds is your daily YouTube car game show where we predict the online auction results of the most interesting cars on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, Haggerty Marketplace, and more. It's just like the Price is Right game show. Play along and see if you can beat the nerds. Sup, nerds? We are live on the interwebs. Welcome, everyone. My name is John Polnick. We are coming to you live from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas in the Rami studio, along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco in the yet-to-be-named uh, studio of his own. We had a name for it, but we're trying to be nice. Um, yeah. You know what's kind of exciting here tonight uh, there, Michael Deeb? Well, I would just say, based on what's behind you, you know, in studio, the prisons are empty. That mm, is for sure. Mm, man, um, mm. we have yahoos as guests tonight. Yeah. Usually we try to say that we bring on experts Total or people yahoos. that know more than us. Tonight is going to be a complete dumpster fire. That's because our <laughs> good friend, Rami Mirza, hey. namesake of the studio, hey. is here in studio. Uh, hello. <laughs> what's up, Rami? How's the Rami show going? The Rami show is going great. Everything is good. JP, uh, thanks for the intro. I really like the new intro you got on this. It's, it's excellent. I almost wanted to be like, come on down. Right? I mean, it's, it's a game show. Show. Tyler Hoovy ripped us off. Uh, we know he that. How, oh, yeah, he totally did. Uh, not the only guest tonight. Not nope. only do we have Rami, but we have our good friend, the speed demon, the Persian pillow himself, <laughs> Sahan Fazi in the house. How you doing, Sahan? What's up, buddy? The price is wrong. <laughs> oh, wouldn't you know? All right. Jeez! Yes. Uh, welcome to the yeah. show nerds it's gonna be a big one tonight yeah. um before we get to predictions and reconciling how wrong we were on the last batch of predictions uh just want to give a shout out to our good friends at oh. god and porsche and god and classic of las vegas if you are looking for parts for your classic porsche if you want a classic porsche if you need your classic porsche fixed god mm. and classic is the place to go give them a call and let them them know the bid nerds sent you uh and also if you're like you know look there's a bunch the nerd herd is already chiming in right yeah. uh we got gerd here already what's gerd. up gerd jim baggins hanging out george is hanging out hey nerds that's right of course chris carbine's here randy b spud syndicate is already hanging out uh we we're not seeing anthony uh but we should because anthony is the guy who makes sure all of our watches work correctly if you have a fine swiss watch and you need fine swiss re if you need fine Swiss watch repair, for you to say. our Smiths uh, does a much better job at repairing your fine Swiss watch than I do at saying. So uh, go ahead and send your watch to our Smiths and they will get you hooked up. They also have a great selection of pre-owned fine Swiss watches and new stuff coming in all the time Ooh. too. So yeah. we expect to see Anthony here in the uh, nerd herd chat very soon. What's up, Chris Benelli? How you doing? All right, uh, guys, we made some predictions on the last episode, and uh, we had Ray Sh uh, Shevska from uh, Car Edge on the episode. He was a uh, very gracious guest uh, on the East Coast joining us. Uh, so he was up late to make predictions with us. And uh, Michael Deeb, I think, as usual, he kind of showed us up. Uh, our guests are usually better at this than we are. Uh, so let's Speak get for to yourself. Well, show I, me mean, up. <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, he kind of wiped the floor with us on our he on did. the on the he did on off the, the cuff. Week. He was really yeah. good. Yeah, he was. Wow. He, yeah. and, and I True. think I made it very clear that we would not invite him back to the show. After yeah. He did yeah, I don't think I mean, he how wants rude. How rude. He, this, He's not like our guest tonight. They, they don't. He doesn't want to yeah. slum it that often. I mean, come on. No. I mean, <laughs> who does that, JP? Who does that septuagenarian think he is coming on our show and showing us up? Yeah, he did. He totally did. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. Well, we made some predictions on the last episode. Let's get Ooh. to reconciling those. What was the first car on our list from last episode? Michael D. JP. 
JP, I hope you're sitting down because I don't want the shock of this to kill you. But Chris Carbine from Carbine Motor Cars in New Orleans, <laughs> Louisiana, submitted a Porsche for us to review. I, I mean, I don't think he's missed an episode, to be honest. Chris Carbine, thank you for sending us this 1975 Porsche 911 Carrera Coupe that is based in Scottsdale, Arizona, and represented by our good friends at Avant nice. Garde. Shout out to Matt Crandall. Um, who we had on here, I mean, just a week ago, two weeks ago, right, JP? A few weeks ago, um, yeah, time flies, right? <laughs> Matt found this car, and um, what a car, JP. So it's a 75, basically a mid-year Carrera. Uh, for 1975, this would have been one of only 395 imported for the year. I mean, just let that number sink in for a minute. That's like, you know, uh, 964 C4 wide body, low number production. That's That's a low number. Less than 475 came in. Uh, and U.S. Carreras, despite having um, the lesser motor than their European counterparts, have really been bringing big numbers. Now, this car is particularly spectacular um, as the motor was built by Dick Elrude uh, with a – basically, they, they <laughs> took out the 2.7, popped in a 77 3-liter Carrera motor. Now, the 77 C3 motor, JP, that's the turbo block without a turbo. That's not an SC motor. They put that motor in the car, and then they punched it out to 3.2 liter. So this is a built 3 liter motor that is currently 3.2 liter. Uh, they repainted the car. This is, um, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a slick roof. Uh, it's got the Turbo Carrera uh, wing. It looks fantastic in silver. Uh, it's got sports seats, and it even it looks like it even has the thicker steering wheel and air conditioning. I mean, basically, JP, this 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 car here is ticking every box. And of course, it looks better than whatever brochure Porsche would have pumped out in 1975 uh, because the photography that uh, 911R do, especially in Scottsdale, these Arizona shots, I mean, JP, it's pretty dreamy stuff. Uh, even you and I would tip our caps to the work that they do because it's yeah. so fantastic. It really gets people going. Um, and, I, you know, they've got cars on here regularly, so the, it's a, it's a well-known brand. So anyway... The window sticker is on there, JP. It was at 17,762 back in 1975. But there's a lot of good equipment here, and we all like the car. I started the bidding at $130,000. JP, you were way more pragmatic coming in at just $111,000. And Ray Shevska, who was in studio, well, not in studio, but was uh, on joining us remotely. Um, where is he located? Do you know where he's? Uh, he's, he's in Ventnor City, New Jersey. Vintner City, New Jersey. I had no idea they had Vintners in New Jersey. Uh, by anyways, the shore. I, by the shore. Ray was the high man on compass. Uh, he came in at $149,000. I thought I was, when you came in underneath me by 20 grand, JP, I thought I was going to be out there on an island. But Ray took the over. Um, so, Rami, yes. U.S. Carreras have been bringing good money recently. This one's restored and has a motor upgrade. It has AC. It's got the right wing. It's got the little bumperettes from the 74. I mean, if you were making one, you'd put it together this way. Yes. What do you think this car would have brought on Bring a Trailer with those photographs this week on BAT? Two questions. How many miles again? Uh, I don't think the mileage matters, JP. At this point, with a rebuilt motor, I think the mileage is, is irrelevant. Okay. Uh, I'll read it to you anyways. But Ooh, um, this car is I nice. will give you... They and don't even have the mileage on there. You're kidding. It's not even listed. No, it's not even listed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah, they it do looks any like it's a five-digit. I mean, uh, the mid-years are five-digit. Um, <clears throat> there it is. There's the odometer. So yeah. 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 But, 38,000. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's going to be 138,000 or mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. how long ago was that engine build done, I guess, would be the question Rami's really trying to ask. Um, oh, back thanks, JP. <laughs> 31 years ago. 35 years ago. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. So it's going to need some work. Um, and then what suspension? Is it all original? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice nerd answer. Oh, my God. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Sure. What did Robbie? you expect? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Anything I'm, to get you to give me a number, whatever you want to hear. <laughs> I, I, would, I wouldn't pay any more than 89000 for that car. $89,000. That is a very terrible bid, and we'll take it. And then, <laughs> Sahan, what do you think, Sahan? Give me a number, buddy. Sahan, this car is fast, by the way. Sahan, what do you think? That seems like a lie. <laughs> no, it is. It, three, it's probably 3.2. It's probably making 300 horsepower. And that's probably one of the lightest platforms they have. The only thing heavy is probably yeah. making 300 horsepower. I mean, if it's making 300 horsepower, I'll give it 115,000 just because okay. you said 300 horsepower. Had you said 275, yeah. I would have said 45,000. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. but hold also, on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Nice. Normally, normally I'd be like, okay, all right, yeah, let them bid poorly. But remember, this is a special car. This is a 3.0. 75 this is this is a it's not just you know, and i've made this mistake before in the past and i don't particularly value these cars myself because they are so similar to just a regular sc okay fine great in 78 it's an sc with a, a three liter and about the same horsepower which nowhere near 300 but you know it, it the Regardless of the engine, if the stock engine wouldn't have 300 horsepower, but the 3.0s are very, very rare, which makes them collectible. So don't com- don't make the mistake of co- uh, comparing this to like a regular mid-year or an SC. Yeah. That and, said, and John, 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 just to clarify, this... go ahead, Son. I'm, I'm just sorry, but it, was this a swapped motor or was this the yes. motor that came in it back? So this was born a 2.7 US Carrera. Right. Somebody found a European three liter motor and put it in there and nice. poured it out to 3.2. So it's a built three liter. It's a turbo block. Sahan, when you're not I'm, I'm going to hop in here. I know. I So now I think we're all incorrect. <laughs> no, I no, believe JP, you, this you, is an actual, bu- like the, it, this was it, a three liter it, to start with. No, it wasn't. It was a 2.7. So John, uh, the uh, US, the, the three liter from uh, Europe, the, the C3s. Were only made in 1976 and 1977. All oh, right, okay, yeah, it does say that. I thought mm-hmm. I remember reading it, but yeah, you're right. It's so it says the the engine is three. Okay, yeah, this is very oh, confusing for everyone involved, myself included. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> like I said, the, the nerds are stumped. The nerds are stumped. I can't no, believe that's what I was asking. I was getting conflicting information. So yeah, so <laughs> oh, are you good excuses. at 115, or do you want to add to your bid? No, no. Like I said, I'll pay forty five thousand for it, but I'll bid one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. All right. He's worse than so, me. <laughs> so, so again, the, the U.S. Carreras are are definitely strong, where the mid years might be soft, and uh, this Why? particular car is restored to a high standard, and it has a motor upgrade. This car ticks every box. It did really, really well, John. Our car sold. For one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars, what on thirty-seven bids? Um, now, again, I think that the real value on a U.S. Carrera is if it has the stock motor and drivetrain in there. And at that at that rate, I would see this being one hundred thirty, one hundred forty thousand dollar car with the built three liter. This number really surprises me. This this is this adds hope to people who are modifying their cars. I don't think you can expect the same result that this car was done to a high standard. And clearly a couple people were fighting over it. JP, are you as surprised by that result as I am? Anything over 150 is basically stupid money. The only, I don't think he's going to. The only yeah. thing that this car really has going for is the fact that it's a 75. So it doesn't have to worry. You don't have to worry about smog, which is a right. significant issue when you're talking about engine builds. If you have a car, if yeah. you're building, I don't know, an 86 turbo with 500 horsepower or something like that, you're going to have an issue smog in that. Um, whereas this car, okay, 300 horsepower, you can take it anywhere, including California, and that's kind of a big deal. But I don't think it's a fifty thousand dollar premium big deal. There are a lot better cars that we've seen over the last six months for uh, a heck of a lot less. Um, what do you think of that, Rami? I think uh, it's a plant. <laughs> I think I think somebody, uh, his brother-in-law, bought that <laughs> just to raise the <laughs> price up. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, you could get a turbo for that. What I don't understand. What can you guys explain to me why that is so valuable? Well, I mean, I think that's yeah. What do you think, Son? I'm a little surprised, um, but it's obviously a super beautiful car. It's very clean. The interior looks wonderful. It looks to be in great condition. Uh, the 75 thing is is definitely a, it would be a big deal to me. Obviously, I, you know, I, if I was looking for a classic car, 75 would be a, a definitely a, a because you're in the Bay Area. Because <laughs> I'm in California, yeah, right? Yeah. That's right. I live in the place where cars are basically banned, um, yep. which is why my car has a Washington plate. <laughs> um, but yeah, that does seem Smart. like a pretty ridiculous number. So yeah. you know, I, I would not pay that. No. No way. Yeah, I mean, whew, boy, that is a lot. I mean, I, I don't think it's fair to compare it to a 930. I mean, that's apples to oranges. That's like two different things. W- would you rather have a 930 over this? Some people would. Some, like, I wouldn't. I would probably rather have um, a really hot, naturally aspirated little mid-year over a 930. But that, but I'm not, but that doesn't mean, 
uh, that that's necessarily the right answer, or the wrong answer. That's just a personal preference thing. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, it, it, it's something says and, the guy who wants to buy my nine thirty. Well, I do want to buy your nine thirty. <laughs> that's true. That is true. Um, I just, uh, but I, you know, your nine thirty compared to this car would be a tough one because this, really, it, it really would because but, this is kind of a special car. But I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what do you guys think of the results of this kind of weird bastard seventy five mid year nine eleven with a built engine? Uh, did did somebody way overpay for this really nice car, uh, or is this just kind of like okay? Wait a minute. Before we end this, team, what do you think happened? I I mean I don't know what the, I think I think some I think a couple of guys fell in love with the pictures and the car, and and these are increasingly more difficult to find out there. Um, it's almost impossible to find a U.S. Carrera for under one hundred twenty thousand dollars listed anywhere, whether it's a um, you know a, a regular ad or on an auction. They're drying up because there's just not that many of them in the first place, John. And so um, this one's done. It's it's got all the upgrades you'd want if you had the money to do it, and it's already done for you. It's, it's you know it's that same thing where you're like say you had an allocation with a builder, but somebody has a, a a car from your favorite builder done. Would you pay a little bit of a premium so you can have your car now? If you could afford that, you would. And that's kind of what I think the story is here. Sports seats, the sports steering wheel, slick roof, whale tail spoilers, small bumperettes. I mean, if I was building one, I would do it exactly like this car, but just change the color. So I, I just think two people fell in love with it, and they paid, they overpaid on this car. Yes. But JP, only by like 10 or 15%, not by 30%. Yeah. I don't uh, think they'll get 165 for it again, but they'll sell this car for 140 easy and drive it for two years and enjoy it. And that's not yeah, bad depreciation yeah. on a used vintage car. That's fine. I mean, Ger- Gerd said, sorry, Gerd said it's 930 money. So, I mean, it's like, come on. I agree. Well, you said that. You said that, Rami. And yeah, it, but Gerd true. said it too. And he's like, in the yeah. comments. And it's like, I agree. I totally yeah. agree. But I, I agree car, with you too. If this car, JP, if this car is making 275, 280 horsepower, it can keep up with a 930. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, on the so, corners for sure, and and yeah. JP, you're right. You know, it's just a it's a it's a matter of what do you want, right? Do you want the 930 or do you you want the turbo? You want the natural aspirated? You know, the car is definitely more of a classic, but I, I think he overpaid for it. Yeah, I mean, there's I, no doubt this is way overpaid. Um, all right, let's sit. let's move on from this one. Let on. us know what you guys think of this car. Uh, definitely some weird results. Definitely not a price implosion. That's kind of a price explosion on that one. <laughs> uh, so that one doesn't exactly support our opening claim. Uh, but maybe the next one will. What's the next car on the list? All right, JP. Uh, we picked a 2013 Cadillac CTS-V wagon with a six-speed manual that was also on Bring a Trailer last week. Our car is located in... Midlothian, Virginia, showing 47,000 original miles. Now, John, this car, upon closer inspection, looks just like any other lease return or used car. Somebody has clearly driven it and enjoyed it, but there's a few dings and scratches, and there's a regular wear and tear you'd expect on, you know, relatively late metal car, although it's hard to believe this car is already 14, 15 years old. Um, But with 50,000 miles on it, it has the right amount of patina for a 50,000-mile car. This is not some garage queen. This is somebody's... Uh, toy and it looks like they've had a little bit of fun with it that being said uh cadillac does not make this platform in a wagon anymore Mm. um so to find this hot rod hooligan muscle car wagon with a six speed um and the cool seats and it's a it's an attractive colorway we all liked the car and we thought it would do well Uh, and we certainly all commended uh cadillac for even building this damn thing in the first place so jp i started the bidding at sixty five thousand dollars you actually really like this car and took a very strong over. Um, you covered me at $75,000. Yeah. And then Ray uh, Shevska, who was in studio, split the difference between us and gave us the bid of $70,000. Uh, so it's on the East Coast, Rami. It's got 50,000 miles on it. You can see by these photos, it's not a perfect car, uh, but it is a rare one with fair miles, an attractive colorway, and that desirable six speed manual. Yeah, Rami, what do you think this car would go for on BAT? Yeah, I really like the six-speed and that engine. That platform is good. It's reliable and yeah. fast and powerful, yeah. and it's you Corvette can make motor. you can yeah. make it faster. You can make it a lot oh, faster yeah. if you want. Yeah, totally. And all it's going to do is be tail happy. So I love a car like that. I'd say probably seventy-three thousand was what I would I would say. Is very would go good. Sahan, oh, I, I got, got a good car. bid. I got a car for you, Sahan. It's not slow. What do you like, buddy? What do you like about it? What would you I like mean, it? again, relative. I, I love this car. I love this car. LSA is a great motor. Um, I mean, second gen, 
the second gen TTSVs did a lot compared to the first gen. So there was, you know, big upgrades in the interior, big upgrades in the suspension. Yeah. Also the rear cradle, uh, which was a problem in the first gens was upgraded in the second gen. So they didn't have the same uh, issues with the diff. Um, it's a great car. If it was not a manual, I would say 60, 65, but with the manual, I think in the seventies is, is pretty reasonable. So, I mean, you know, I'll go ahead and, uh, where were you at, uh, exactly, dude? Oh, uh, okay. So the bids were, I was at 65, JP at 75, Ray at 70 and Rami at 73. Oh, got it. All right. Well, I mean, I guess I'll just go on the over. I'll go 76. There you go. 76. All right. So. Um, we checked, and this car didn't have a bad Carfax. It only had two owners. Uh, this car went for a song, guys. Our car sold for just $56,000 on 10 bids. So I'll start with you, uh, Sahan. Are you sad you didn't bid on this car at $56,000? Would you have wanted it? Is that a... Is yes, that a, that's a great car. Would that have gotten your yeah. money, right? That's a lot of car for, for sure. the money at 56000 That's right? a great car for 56000 I have seen I've seen automatics go for that range, honestly. Right. Obviously, the yeah. dings, like it looks like it's got some, you know, some wear and tear that's a little more than normal because um, most people took pretty good care of these cars. Uh, that being said, like that can all be fixed. And uh, I think this is a great value and a great car. Whoever bought this car is going to thoroughly enjoy it and be able to sell it for very near what they bought it for in a couple of years if they so yeah. choose. Rami, what do you think Rami, of the results I, of this? Thing? I agree with that. I agree with Sahan. And I also think that what hurts this car the most is being an East Coast car. Uh, that's really what's killing it. You know, I mean, you've got uh, who knows what's underneath it. You know, at the bottom, they salt the roads there all the time. Even even when it's raining, they're like, "Oh, frozen rain," and, and they salt, 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 salt. So that car, if it's been driven, it's going to be been driven through salt and the rain and everything else. So, oh, there we go. Yeah, perfect. So, I mean, it's it's definitely going to have some rust on it. It's not going to be as valuable as a car from the West Coast. So, I think that's one of the things that hurt it. But I'm surprised it went that low. That's a really good car, really cool car, and yeah. and and just fun think? to drive. What do you think, John? Yeah, I mean, I'm totally with Rami on that one. The East Coast thing definitely is the biggest knock on this car. And, you know, looking underneath, it looks fine. It mm -hmm. definitely has surface corrosion. It's starting. If you get this out of the East Coast now, uh, <laughs> don't wait. Ship it out to the West Coast ASAP. Get it away from that salt. Uh, I think it'll be just fine. But if this car spent another day in New Jersey, uh, it just would have, you know, rusted into pieces. And that's a shame because that's kind of what happens to East Coast cars. And that's why we always say kind of be careful when you're considering cars uh, from the East Coast, uh, especially like Florida or the Northeast, like Rami says. You know, a lot of times with the sports cars, though, people that have stuff like that don't drive them in the, in the uh, wintertime. You know, if you have an old 911 or whatever, uh, it's pretty unlikely that you're commuting to Manhattan every day in that thing. Whereas this is the kind of car that someone exactly. in Ventnor City, New Jersey would drive to Scranton or somewhere pretty much all the, it's a wagon. I mean, it's, this car actually has utility. So this car probably actually saw those salted roads, uh, which means pay attention. Uh, so, but yeah, what do you guys think of the results of this wagon? I could definitely yeah. see, uh, Sahan driving this thing. Um, uh, yeah. Sahan wanted to John, hop in there. Sahan wanted to hop in there. What's up, Sahan? No, I, 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 I would buy this thing right now. Um, obviously, that surface, you know, rust on the bottom is not amazing. Uh, but like you said, if we, if we, someone hopefully saved it from the yeah. East Coast and uh, and brought it to a good home. And the good thing about it being this cheap and having this type of mileage is that you can just mod the hell out of it and not worry about it. Totally. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not, it's not a, it's not a 5,000 mile car. It's a car that you can throw long tubes, a pulley on, <laughs> a tune on and not think anything of it. Supercharger. And not, you know, not, you're not losing value of a, uh, you know, of a, of a car that is like a collector vehicle at this point. Right. It's a driver's car, as you said earlier. And, and it should be. Yeah. Well said. And JP in the, in the bids there uh, from the herd, Randy B covered everybody's bid. It looks like Anthony was the winner on this one because he was the lowest man of the group at 63.5, undercutting my bid by 1500 bucks. So Anthony gets the win, uh, but I'll take it on the show. That's go. what the spuds do. All right. Wow. What else did we make a prediction? So that, that one, when I saw the results of this car and we want your comments uh, below, please let us know what you think of the results. But really the thing is, this was the car that made me go, holy crap, what's going on? 
Um, no. Is there a price implosion? Because this should have been a $70,000 car all day long. We're going into spring. This is the kind of muscle car that people are going to start looking for. Uh, so, yeah, shocking result. Uh, does the next car on our list support the idea that there is a price implosion? What was the next one on the list? All right, JP. I, it's going to be tough to read much of the tea leaves on this one. This is that 1987 Land Rover 110 that was built <sighs> by the company Arc. Arconic, right? Yep. So it's got an LS3 powered 87 Land Rover 110. Um, you know, look on the outside, this thing looks tough and it looks really cool, and it and it's got this big oh, stonking US motor. Um, but JP, upon closer inspection, and I told you this right up front, this car does nothing for me. The interior and the two tone looks really cheap. The steering wheel looks like uh, like the worst selection of a steering wheel at Grand Auto. Um, the wheels and tires, you know, you and Ray covered this uh, extensively to suggest no matter how knobby those tires are, this vehicle will never go off road, nor will it survive it. Um, and and JP, you kind of went off a little bit on the crate motor um, and you were sourcing Rami's Land Rover. And the only thing I want to clarify as as we we marry this half of the of this car to the other half uh, of the of the coverage earlier this one is a normally aspirated one. So this is, you know, we, I think they, we read that it's good for like 400 horsepower or something. You know, Rami's is supercharged uh, and is making, you know, almost twice as much torque, which is why it's ripping itself apart and bursting <laughs> out of the motor mounts. And the motor literally wants to leave the vehicle and go down yes. the road by itself. Um, this one, I don't think it would be the great. I actually think this would probably drive nice on the road. But again, this is not an off-road vehicle. Um, cool to look at. Um, but there, but there's no, I, you know, I, this to me is like a lap dance. It looks the part, but you're not getting anything. So I, you know, I pass, I'm, I'm not interested, uh, with that in mind, JP, it was hard to guess what we thought this would go for. Uh, we all agreed that this would go for 250 would cost about 250 or more to build. So I started my bid at $200,000. You took the over at 225,000 and then, uh, Ray Shevska, who was with us in studio, or not, sorry, I keep saying in studio, was with us on the show um, and covered this car with us. He gave us the bid of $229,000. Uh, Rami, you know, you're sort of familiar with this concept. This is not your car. It, 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 let, let's no. be clear. But you know what, you, you can see what's here and you know what these things cost. What do you think this would cover? Uh, what, what would this bring on Bring a Trailer out of Brownsburg, Indiana? And showing 1,200 miles, true mileage unknown, but 1,200 miles, I guess, I guess since the car was built, um, and it's it's being represented by Graham Rahal Performance, right? So, uh, Graham Rahal is the Indy driver. His dad was an Indy driver, and between them, mm -hmm. the family, they have a bunch of car dealerships. Graham loves to buy weird, exotic cars, drive them for a little while, and then put them up for sale for a profit. Um, this is one of Graham's cars. So, what do you, what do you see when you look at this, and what do you think it would bring on BAT? Um, yeah. barely broken in yeah so i've i've had a 110 and i have a 90 um i'm gonna tell you are, are, there are different tuners and guys that do this stuff so the land rovers are all over the country and all over the world i think the best are in out, out of amsterdam they're called monarch but that being said uh, that you're exactly right it's kind of like they put a lot of makeup and a dress on it but underneath it's still nothing to be <laughs> that's my car <laughs> and there's just nothing to be said for it so if you look at it carefully that car the uh, the 110 uh, just because I've done what you're seeing now to my uh, Defender, it's basically an NAS spec, which is a North American spec, and they kept the four-wheel drive, they kept the regular dash, they only put seats in it, um, so it probably has the original transmission in it, and that made it to an LS is the worst. Is it stick or automatic? Automatic. Oh, it's oh, brutal. It's going to be so, so slow. It's going to be so slow. Because it's only because of the gearing in these. If you keep the four-wheel drive in these, no matter how much horsepower you put in it, the gearing just won't let you go fast. So it just slows down uphill, and you can't utilize the horsepower. Um, that being said, these cars go for a lot of money because of the way they look. It's just the look. Right. People buy them for the look. And I'm thinking it's going to go for more. I, th I, I, I say 250. Because, 250. So, Robin, yeah. I want to tell you. So, right, it's a regular four-passenger, and then in the back, they've got the, the soldier seating, right? So they have soldier seating on one side. They built a bar on the other. Awesome. <laughs> Just totally awesome. You know, I mean, it's, that truck Anyways. is not about performance or off-road. It's about driving somewhere and hanging out and having a good time. <laughs> That's it. For sure. 250 from Rami. <laughs> Sahan, what do you think uh, this thing would bring on BAT? 
Man, I have, I, you know, uh, Rami, obviously, I defer to Rami because he knows. Uh, I, I certainly know that. Oh, no, it's, it's like stick. Not it's, not, it's not automatic. It is automatic. Yeah. You, you, from what? where you're, it, it oh, looks sorry, like a manual, but it's a, uh, but that isn't, yeah, because it's got the P R N D D T one. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, it's even uh, more tragic than I thought. So tragic. Um, this chick's yeah. got a stick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this God. is definitely the crying game in the. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's pretty cool though. Somebody wants this car. I, despite the fact that I don't want this car, and this That's is cool. not how I would build it. Um, yeah. You know, there's somebody is definitely like, oh my God, look at that sweet cigar cutter that comes with it. <laughs> it's got the right brakes. <laughs> <laughs> and is going to pay that extra money because it comes with a binder <laughs> or whatever that you know um and a brand name on the back but uh but you know again this type of thing is not cheap no matter what yeah. like you the car itself is not a cheap vehicle and then doing the swap it looks clean so just the fact that the swap looks clean that there's not wires all over the place and so on uh it makes a big difference and makes it like at least professional, despite the stylistic choices not being ones that Deeb uh, approves of. <laughs> mm. uh, so, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah, whatever. I, I have no idea, but 220, 240, let's go 220. 220. All right, 220 is not a bad bid. Um, JP, I know you saw the results of this. I'm wondering, I can't wait to ask you if you're, surpri- uh, if you're surprised by this. Our car sold for just $180,000 on 32 bids. So it got wow. action, and that's the number. And and listen, Graham was willing to take that. So he didn't think it was going to bring much more than that. Or, you know, BAT leaned on him with a uh, with a heavy reserve. But I doubt that's the case because I would think they would want to earn his business and let him sort of write his own checks, so to speak. Um, so, John, when you saw that, were you surprised? I was like, damn, it didn't even bring two hundred grand. I was like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I I know a thing or two of how much these cost to build from, uh, and, you know, I know you said that it's not like Rami's, uh, D, but I, I don't care. The fact that that engine is jammed in there, yeah, it's not as bad as a supercharged one, but it's still jammed in there. There's no fucking airflow in there. That no, thing is right. going, to going to overheat, overheat like crazy uh supercharger or not um and the other thing too is all that torque being sp- that that none of the drivetrain is built to handle that uh it's gonna right. break if you try stomping on it, and especially if you try stomping on it. now compared to the thing the thing is though is most people aren't like rami most people are going to get in this thing and they're just gonna be like yeah i want to be able to go on the on-ramp right, right. you know at, at you know, freeway traffic. speed they're not going to be trying to do donuts in the middle of the desert or something or jump stuff uh <laughs> like our good friend over here uh so it'll or it's, wheelies you but know, still if you're stomping it, it, this is you know someone mentioned in the comments you know would you get an ionos grenadier over this uh and the answer is heck yeah because you get two of them and even mm. though i'm not a big fan of that that uh, BMW powertrain in that yeah. thing, it's still going to be more reliable than this. And at least it's something that someone has a schematic for that was built in a factory by someone who could possibly repair the stupid thing. Um, whereas this, just is, these hodgepodge vehicles, yes. unless you are prepared for constantly maintaining it, um, you're just asking for like. There's not a lot of not a lot of people are like my good friend Rami here. Rami, yeah. do you think a normie can handle something like this? Well, uh, ask me where my defender is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where's your defender right now, Rami? In the shop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. But how many I think... stripper telephone numbers come with it? Oh, loads. I mean, that's just part <laughs> of it, you know. <laughs> they just the you drop you, you drive down the strip and they just jump in the back. It's great. You don't even have to get phone <laughs> numbers. You don't need phone true. numbers. They're it's like, so true. Uh, you were with me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen it. But yeah, yeah no that person. that truck. I mean, like they. I, what people don't understand is when you do those kind of like giant bills and whatever you know to any car. It's like it's like you're 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 you're. Like JP said, you're merging things together that don't belong together. Yeah. So they never work, and everything's custom. Like I had to cut a hole in my hood. I had to redo the entire uh, cooling system because the truck would just overheat at when it was like 30 degrees out. And I was like, stupid. So it's just, yeah, you, you're, the truck isn't meant for that platform. And you've got to constantly maintain and change things, and it's always breaking. And whether you drive like me or not, it's still a nightmare. Nightmare. Can I ask you guys a question? At one hundred eighty thousand dollars, could you buy a nice used G squared instead? 
Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that yeah. is a so that, far, you, that's a great very, point. Very dude. great point. Wouldn't yeah. you rather have that than the, this? The point? older yeah. style yeah. Like, G-squared. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 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 And yeah. you have, the older you have more style horsepower. G-squared is the one you want. Yeah. You have reliability, horsepower, and possibly even <laughs> warranty. So, yeah, do that. It may burn yeah. to the ground, you could do, but we don't yeah. know what it may, about Well, that. I don't know. Yeah. Our good friends at Audi Henderson here in Las Vegas have one right now, I think for 175. Really? I would have bought that all day long before this stupid thing. You can go ahead and buy yourself a gun rack for it. Uh, it's a white one, Rami. Uh, <laughs> ah! And it's all Ren teched out too. What? It's all Rami all the time. Um, yes. Actually, let's like yes. We're going to Luke. <laughs> I, I'm looking at you, buddy. Yeah. Commission yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah, there uh, you go, Luke. Come on. I'm the, I'm the spokesman. Yeah. He Come is on. the spokesman yeah. for Audi they, Henderson. They just told the youngest salesman on the floor that he has to stay there until 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we are late. We're rolling late. out of here. We're going to Audi Hendo. Oh, yeah. right. wow. Don't look him in the eye. <laughs> what do you guys think of the results of this crazy <laughs> Land Rover build? Was that way over bought? Uh, uh, or was that a deal at $185,000? Are you surprised like I am that it sold for that? It definitely cost more to build it. Uh, let us know in the comments below. And I think at least two out of those three predictions definitely show some pretty wacky stuff going on uh, when it comes to prices on Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, and Haggerty Marketplace. Uh, we are going to be right back with new predictions, and we will test our theory on these new predictions and we'll see what happens with those stick around it's only a minute we'll be right back hey guys i gotta tell you about our friends god and porsche of las vegas and god and classic if you're looking for a new porsche or a classic you've got to call our friend steve at god and this guy save yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to steve he'll find you the classic porsche you're looking for god and porsche of las vegas if you don't subscribe to bid nerds on youtube right now I'm gonna shoot this 997. If you said, wait, that's a 996, you're a nerd. So subscribe to the new YouTube channel, Bid Nerds. Hey guys, you're probably looking at your watch and wondering if Bid Nerds will ever end. So you better talk to our friends at Our Smiths to make sure your Rolex, Tag Hauer, AP, or any fine timepiece is in tip top shape. Our Smiths, fine Swiss repair. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, it is some more bid nerd time, if I can find the uh, screen that I was trying to get. I am texting our friend Luke over at, uh, um, at Audi Henderson right now to see if, uh, hey, you still got that uh, G-squared? It's nice. Rami, are you going to take your gaze there? Am I gonna? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Are it. you gonna take your what? Sorry, dinner's dinner's canceled. We're going to Audi. Yeah, yeah. About two dates. They're like, uh, we're going to Audi of Henderson. I'm sure they can deliver a pizza to the showroom while we're there. All right, uh, we are live right now. If you're in the nerd herd, that means you're one of those people in the world that we love. We love you, nerd herd. You guys rock it. Uh, if you haven't already hit the thumbs up button. Please do right now. Uh, we want to get those thumbs up so we can grow that nerd herd. It's fun to have you guys uh, playing along with us. We've got some interesting cars uh, ready to go, and let's make some predictions. What is the first thing on the list, Michael Deep? All right, JP. We selected for our amusement this 1997 Lamborghini Diablo VT Roadster that is currently on cars and bids. JP, our car is, looks like it's buried in the woods in Midfield, Maryland, showing 34,900 miles, but they're actually citing it as true mileage unknown. John, I know that um, Doug DeMiro and his cars and bids site have moved their market up. Like they have leveled up over the last year. And we have, you know, we've been, chronologically you know covering this as he's done well more and more with some exotic cars including some lamborghinis but this car that found doug or the, the the car that doug found just looks rough to me there are some painted pieces in the interior that really dumb this car down the the, the yellow painted uh gated shifter the yellow painted uh dash applique um the yellow piping and stuff like that the, the chin spoiler, the wheels being black. There's just something about this car that looks really cheap. 
you would you would be forgiven for asking the question, is it real or is it a fake? Uh, because it just doesn't look the part to me. So um, I just think if you've got a rare Lamborghini with a manual, you, you'd be you'd be smart to sell it now. I think the market for a car like this is really hot. And as such, I think you would go get the car serviced, go get the car professionally detailed, and go get the car professionally shot. And I don't think any of that stuff was done here. And these photos are terrible. The car looks rough. Um, and, and I just think this is going to be a massively missed opportunity for the seller to part with his car. And I don't blame him or, or fault him for taking it to cars and bids. I think this car in this colorway would do well. But if you have the stock parts or you have the ability to put the car back to the way it would have looked when it came off the showroom floor, I think that would help a lot. Now, I'd be eating my words if that yellow plastic gated shifter came from Lamborghini. I'll, I'll do that. But based on my experience, which is not tremendous with Lamborghini, I don't think it was born this way. And I think that these things that they did to the car really cheapen it. And, and look at that, John. I mean, this is why wouldn't you go get that fixed if you've got a quarter of a million dollar car or more? And uh, and so this is just this is R U F F rough. Um, and um, John, when we started the show, uh, Cars and Bids was in, in its infancy, and it really didn't compare well to bring a trailer. Oftentimes, we saw really poor photos that were taken with undesirable backgrounds in like parking lots with uh, trash cans and things of that nature. And we always wondered why Doug didn't do a better job of having like a bouncer with a red rope in front of his auction site saying, you shall not pass. You cannot come in with that poor photography or with that shitty car. How <laughs> can you park a Geo Metro that's up on jacks on a front lawn next to a Ferrari if you want to make both customers happy? The Ferrari driver, the Ferrari seller is not going to be happy having his car listed to next to a piece of shit. And, and this car in these photos looks like a piece of shit. And I don't understand why <laughs> cars and bids didn't say, hey, man, like, like there, we're, there's, we have no market for that. Like, like you're, you're basically wholesaling that car on here. And that's not what we're about. And I just I think you have to do that to protect your brand. And that's not happening here. So I picked this car, John, so we could talk about this. At, at, what, at what point do you draw the line in the, sand, in the sand and you go, hell no. So, JP, I send it back to you. Uh, what do you see when you're here? What do you think? Do you, you know, would you take a different stance than I would, or or how would you handle it? Like if it, like if you're, <laughs> put yourself in Doug Demiro's shorts, <laughs> and, and, <grab laughs> and, <laughs> and what would you do? Like, look, put those wheels on a car. Look how much better that would happen if you put those like, uh, yeah. you know, dark nickel finish wheels. Doug so JP, Demiro's I send it to you. Shorts. What is in those yeah. cargo sh pockets? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know, but put he's definitely getting. Doug Demiro's, uh, he's definitely yeah, getting Jesus larger. Sandwich. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, John? Talk to me. Is baby. this what a you, viscous? You... Is this a four wheel drive one, or is this? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. God, I, I. Yeah. No, no, no. It's uh, rear wheel drive. JPS. It is the rear wheel drive. Okay, okay drive. that's yeah. good because the yeah. viscous transmission yeah. ones, like nobody makes the parts for anymore, and and like that's your. Anyways, this. Oh, I, time out! Time out! Time out! Time yeah. out! JP, the car's front drive shaft and front axles have been removed. And these parts are pictured in the gallery and included in the sale. I just so you're right. He couldn't yeah. get the parts, and he just took them off the car. So. Yeah, yeah. There are certain there are certain things on this car that like literally no one makes anymore. Uh, especially so. I don't. Yeah. Look, I've said it before. I say it all the time on the show. The, the criteria is three points. There is the cosmetics. There are the uh, mechanical factors of the car, and then there's the price. You have to have two out of three. This car cosmetically is pretty rough. Uh, mechanically, I'm a little scared. Um, so that's two out of three already. Uh, this thing is going to have to be so dang cheap to make it worth it. But if the if you could get it now. Okay, I don't really care if it's all-wheel drive. If pulling the front axles out and all that stuff, if you can drive it that way, fine. This would be a lot of fun yeah. if you could buy this car for fifty grand or whatever and rock a, a Diablo and just beat the living hell out of it. There's there's a certain flex to that. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, if you can afford to own this car, ironically, that's the only way that this car <laughs> makes sense. Otherwise, uh, y uh, y if you're expecting to get a nice car and restore this and make it something that's like... A legitimate car forget it it's just too far gone uh rami what do you think of this car? i completely agree with you it looks like a sneaker <laughs> <laughs> it's a ridiculous looking car and uh, why are the tires so small uh, yeah no this thing uh, jack too it, mm, yeah it, great 
Uh, if SpongeBob was a transformer, right? Like- totally. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely perfect. I, and why is it so banged up? Like, what? I don't understand. Like, it's just got so many cracks and dings and weird things put on it. Like it, I said, I think someone was just flex. They're like, I'm so damn rich, I can just beat up my Diablo. What do you think, Sahan? I think the Wolf uh, of I Wall think- Street drove it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Well, I think Buddha is, is on, on his Quaaludes. Yeah, yes. Buddha thinks that the car did too much cocaine. I think the, the <laughs> driver was doing too much cocaine and driving the car, and that's what yes. happened here. And he that's, kept on thinking it was know. cool because he was loaded every time he drove it, and he didn't notice that it was actually a pile of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so this thing's amazing. How, yeah, how right. many he miles does it have on it, Mike, it, it, Michael? It's on rails, bro. 34,000 <laughs> true mileage unknown. I am amazed that this car has survived <laughs> long enough to take this kind of abuse. I mean, you look at one of these funny and they break. Uh, so totally. I'm just like, wow, this car is still... It still runs, and, and I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I'm kind of intrigued. Uh, yeah. It's going to be really interesting like, to see what JB, the numbers are. I had a friend who had one of these in yeah. in uh, Phoenix, and he said he would drive it to the country club and have a flatbed waiting because it would never return. Yeah, that does not <laughs> surprise me. Yeah, wherever you're going, you're probably not going to get back. No. <laughs> yeah, you might not even get there. Yeah. Uh, JP, I'll tell you this. This is a 1997 Lamborghini with 34,000 miles on it that needs a complete restoration. Yes. Yeah. Or, like I said, drive out ironically and yeah. wear the yeah. same sweatshirt that you're wearing and rock it. And yeah. just, uh, I mean, look at you. you D, you're ready to go. Is that why you're in this car? You belong on there. Holy yeah. crap. <laughs> like we said we're going to be off the rails or on rails on this episode Lots of rails. uh what do we think this yellow turd is going to bring randy later. b is at tw- uh, 265 grand and randy b is uh very often right the spud syndicate leader up there is uh bringing it michael d what's going to happen all right so jp our car closes tomorrow on cars and bids Again, it's located in uh, Medfield, Maryland, and showing 34,000 miles, but true mileage unknown. Uh, the car is at $105,500 on 28 bids. So this car is getting a lot of attention from the catfish uh, who are <laughs> trying to steal this thing. Uh, but I don't think it's going to go much further at all. JP, I'm going to give you my final bid of $135,000, and I'm telling you right now, the person who pays that and wins this pile of junk is going to be buried in that car. That car is <laughs> a money pit, and I would avoid it. I know we don't. We tend not to give advice. We pretend like we don't know what we're talking about. Stay away from this car, even Ooh. ironically. That car needs $75,000 worth of motor work, not to mention all the ancillary systems that aren't working on it right now. That Just stay away from this thing. You're saying hundred grand worth of work on that thing? At least. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's if, if you're were, not going to touch the cosmetics. I wow. don't think you bother trying to restore this car. I think that's the point of this car. If it, you just keep it running, minimum whatever you got to do to keep it running, V12 in it. and just drive <laughs> it and beat the crap out of it. Even that doesn't make sense. Swapping the engine, just whatever you got, <laughs> just only put money in the mechanical side of it. Who cares what it looks like? And just thumb your nose Why at everyone. Look- uh, this uh, this is like the guy in the you know smoking a cigar and uh, flipping everyone off at the, you know, country club. I, th- there's something fun about this. Yeah. Um, but, you know. It just looks sad. It looks well, like it tragic. Sad. It's a I tragic car. Change the wheels and yeah. uh, and and it looks 100% better. I wouldn't even fix the front valance. I would, like, park it outside and hopefully get the paint to kind of start patinaing to make it look like it's <laughs> been, you know, let's get the let's get the clear coat to start failing. Um, let's just, go, you know, park this, I don't know, next to a bus station or something like that. Just drive it to 7-Eleven. Drive it everywhere until it burns down <laughs> and collect the insurance money. Michael D., your price was what, 135 135. I'm going 140 and it's going to sell. And if I had the extra money, 140 grand, I'd buy it. What say you, oh my Sahan? God, <laughs> I love how every single gasket on the outside of this car is blown out. Like, yeah, totally. Sticking yeah. out all like, wonky, <laughs> just all over. Yeah, exactly. Totally. Like it's blue. It also looks like there's overspray on what looks to be the, like, uh, the spray nozzle for the headlight. <laughs> 
yellow, and on the other side, it's black. It's black. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, so, you Perfect. Know, I, I think this car will bring all of one hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. Wow. And then I think I, whoever drives it, whoever buys this car, will have to buy a bunch of cocaine in order to deal with the woes that are going to come. Mm-hmm. So just be on it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Again, I, irony here, guys. If if you can't afford this car, definitely stay away. But if you have like a dozen other supercars or whatever, this would be a ton of fun. Um, I want this car, and then you get a license plate that's like not Fiero. You'd have to like s- convince everyone <laughs> that this is Perfect. actually a real everyone would be like that's a kit and like kit open, lift open the hood and you're like everyone like oh fuck this really is a real one sorry i just dropped the net bomb everybody ruined the monetization uh all right uh, has everybody <laughs> wow. got their numbers in no rami where you at oh I, I forgot i was so i was so torn up by the car i, I couldn't tell. why is the e-brake on the left side what is wrong with this thing oh well, they're God. all that's they're where they all, all like are that on, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, it's like a 944 a or a bunch of I, other cars I, this car, I just, it's ridiculous. It's uh, 121. Do you think it's Robbie, yeah, 121? Will you, will you drop it from a helicopter for us? I would drive from a, You know what I would do? I, I would drive from a helicopter, then burn it, and then shoot it with a missile, and then drive a plane into it. See, that's the kind of flex That's the kind of flex thing that I'm saying. If you get the money to do that, drive it until it, so it can't. Drive it until it won't drive anymore, and then just make it internet gold by blowing it up and doing, and yeah, let's go get yeah, the helicopter, like diesel, and let's drop whatever. this one. Yeah. When we dropped the 914 Robbie. from the helicopter, we did go buy another 914 uh, without an engine drop that one instead very but movie it's going to be a hard time to find another diablo that's uh for 1500 bucks <laughs> oh man i so want this car I'm so I, w- I want it. it now too i want to take it and just drive it to red rock country club yes <laughs> that's right we would put this in the middle of auto fest and it would be like we would chart here's what we do have this car on the middle of the like on, yes. you know how we always on have the green the, on, on the, the green. green not just the green the 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 uh the tee off, right? The yeah. main spot. Yeah. And just basically what, you know, cause we always support a charity, right? Just be like 10 bucks. You can throw an egg at this Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> How much money would we get doing that? You, the, we'd pay for the car. And at the end, I run it over like Bigfoot with my defense. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and then the helicopter can land next to it and crash. Like it almost did last time. Yeah. All right. Um, or pick it up. Let's move on to the next car. If you guys have some numbers, th- start throwing some numbers at us. Uh, Sergeant Tom thinks a buck twenty. Yeah, it's rough. Gerd thinks it's getting the two ten. Really? Two ten. I mean, okay. Wow. This, if it were clean and nice, D, D, what are we talking? Like a quarter million dollar car? Um, or a nice one? Okay, so the numbers on this car are as follows. Uh, fair condition would be two hundred. Good condition would be three hundred. The average price for these is around three thirty five. If it was excellent, over four hundred, and if it was Concor. Uh, with like no miles on it, it would bring half a million bucks. But the average price is three hundred and thirty-five thousand. All right. So this, this car whoa. is seriously back a book. Yeah, yeah. But still awesome. All right. Let us know what you think. Let us put uh, put it in the comments below. Um, almost as cool as an MR2, right? All right. What's the next car? <laughs> <laughs> a CRV. <laughs> It's hard to imagine, John, but the MR2 was in better condition. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was. What is it with the all the yellow cars lately, too? I think it's because of your sweatshirt. It's just, like, gleaning <laughs> off on all of us here. What is happening? I, I, I'm just going to, I'm just gonna like, put the rat on the table and say Sahan is the common thread, okay? Nah. <laughs> I did not suggest this car. The Persian pillow. Uh, ostracized. All right, here we go. Uh, JP selected for us a 2008 Mercedes-Benz CLK 63 AMG one of the black series cars our car is on bring a trailer located in arvada colorado and showing a healthy and respectable fifty-nine thousand miles on the car this car has had eight owners it's in oh i love this car pretty what what mercedes salespeople in period would have called resell silver um this was arguably like without question the most popular color for the car um you know, I, I think a lot of people in the audience will be familiar with this car. It is worth noting that um, while it was only available for one year in the United States, uh, it was available in Europe for two years, and they still only ever made 500 of these in total. Wow. So it's a very rare car, and I think, Sahan, correct me if I'm wrong, this was the first actual Black Series car that we got in the U.S. market. Is that the correct statement? That is correct. 
Yes. Yeah. So so while Mercedes was making um, pace cars for F1 out of the SLK 55 and uh, I think like the CL uh, Black Series, they made uh, they made Black Series available to the European and rest of the world market. But it wasn't until 2008 when Mercedes Benz used this car as the pace car. And then we got an example of this uh, in the U.S. market as a Black Series. So 500 normally aspirated horsepower from a 6.2 liter V8. Uh, they only came standard with a uh, seven speed automatic. It's not a dual clutch. Uh, it does have a limited slip differential, uh, but it's, it's, it's a pain in the ass to try and defeat the uh, traction control and, and like really break this car loose and have fun with it and hooligan it. Not to say it's not a great driving car, uh, but with all the power and all the suspension and all the bodywork and all the great seats, uh, this is still a muscle car and not a sports car. Uh, if you're in a 911, you're going to walk on this car on any curvy road. Uh, but in a straight line and the, the the sound that comes out of this motor, it's a it's a blast. And I, I love these things. I was actually working for Mercedes-Benz uh, in period. Um, I sold at least one of these, I think, brand new uh, and had a blast taking it around the block from uh, detail to the showroom. The, the cars are super, super fun. They've done really well in the secondary market. These cars, uh, I think, were barely 100 grand when they were brand new. Um, I'll look for the uh, window sticker to clarify that. Uh, but they've always brought, you know, between 80 and 120 thousand dollars, depending on condition and miles. This one's got a few mile, a few miles on it. Uh, but lately, the really well preserved ones have, have started to bring more money. And yeah. JP, you can attribute all that to inflation. Uh, but I'll look for the window sticker, John. I'll send it over to you. I know we have two guys in the studio that love these things, and I, that's why you picked it. Uh, but what do you want to say about it before you send it over? Yeah, I'm not going to say much because, uh, yeah, Sahan and Rami know a lot about these. But I do want to say, and Rami will be able to relate to this, if you buy this car, it's going to be really annoying uh, because everyone's going to walk up to you and <laughs> tell you how horrible the paint is. Um, look at the front fenders here. They're all going to be like, oh, my God, the something's wrong with the paint. And you're going to be like, dude, take off your stupid ND sunglasses and just look at the car. This car is totally wrapped. Uh, and there, some of these wrapping films wind up making the car look like there's paint imperfections until you take your neutral density sunglasses off and it all looks fine. Uh, Rami, your, uh, R your 993 RS has that problem. Yes. Uh, and it's, I, I've seen people like, the, like people have come up to me when you're not around said, <laughs> Oh, have you seen Rami's car? That thing's really nice, but what the hell's wrong with the, why did he buy that? The paint job is like, I'm like, dude, it, you just <laughs> stop. You're an idiot. Uh, what do you think of this car, Rami? I love this car. I look for them all the time. You know, I'm always like trying to buy a black one. Um, it is an amazing car. Uh, Sahan, how many radiators does it have? I know it's got an insane <laughs> amount. Like it's just no, got, it's got one got for the diff. It's got one. Yeah. It's like it's got one for your seat. It's ridiculous. And you know, it's just it's it's it. And it's a real it's a real natural naturally aspirated uh, six point two liter. Like it's a it's got the you know coffee can. Um, pistons so it's like or cylinders rather so I, I i love it i love it and it's got a linear power it's naturally aspirated wider wheel track it it's just it's an awesome car if you've ever driven in one of these it could make your passenger vomit for sure Wait, <laughs> before before i pass it on to sahan uh rami what do you think about this rubbish that deeb said that it's really hard to break the rear tires loose i i, I heard are that you, i was like, like what, what? <laughs> Are you kidding? Have you ever driven that car, Deep? All it does is wanna. It's, 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 it just waggles its tail all the time. You just well, have to turn hear this I one. Think on the before, before they came out with like the C the C, the C sixty three that would have come after this car. Yeah. This was the first car to get this motor right and um, and transmission. I, yeah, I th I think that this car did not have a, uh, a what do you call it a traction control defeat button where they do on later cars. And so uh, I remember when I took it for, for a test drive in the showroom, um, it just like I wanted to burn rubber and it was like it kept, I, I don't know, maybe it was maybe there was a program and I couldn't figure it out. But I you just got to push like the, some of these the buttons. You got to hold it. You have yeah, to you hold, gotta hold it. it right? yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah. I, our, my, five, my dad. <laughs> He's like, I know that. Five, but you didn't do it, did you? <laughs> we had a 500 E and uh, and you couldn't turn the traction control off on that car. either. Really? Because my E, I could turn yeah. it off. You could definitely turn oh the traction control off on this thing. I mean, my uh, 6.3, I mean, it was like... Dude, I mean, my, my wife's five, five. 500 SL, yeah. you could turn it off. Yeah, I was doing uh, burnouts in, in and the 03. cops were like, what are you doing? <laughs> All right, so Han, anyway, what, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this car? Tell us about this thing. I That's mean, this awesome. is the same motor I have in my car. So yep. it's, it's, a, it's a good motor. 
Um, actually, I bought my car, a P31 package, specifically because it came uh-huh. from internal components from the Black Series. Nice. So uh, paid a paid a pretty penny extra to have that. But um, there, you can definitely turn the traction control off, and it definitely burns all the tires. The benefit of this is that it's just super rare, and then you get the wider arches. It's just a very aggressive looking car. Um, and, and it has the motor and the, the, the noises to match, um, that, uh, that body. So this is going to be a ton of fun to drive. Um, they're kind of expensive, you know what I mean? Because yeah. of the rarity, which is a thing to consider when they you're were talking cheap about for like, a while. yeah, you know, I, it, you know, so, so that's a consideration, but this is a super fun car and it's cool and nobody else will have one if you're driving it down the street. So totally true and it's it's got you know no b pillar so you get that that cl kind of feel to it even though it's it's not a cl it's a CLK. and it's just it, the, the suspension the ride everything about this car is super fun super annoying to everybody around you but when you're in it it's great <laughs> just the way we like it just the way i like it yeah <laughs> well boys what do we think this car will bring or what are you guys going to bid on it what's going to happen michael deep all right jp our car is currently sitting at sixty thousand dollars with two days left until the hammer falls. Yeah, that sixty thousand dollars is a culmination of just six bids. Um, the car has some miles on it, and I just feel like if you're looking for one, um, it, this is going to appeal to a smaller audience for the car that would want one with miles because they intend to drive it and don't care about the mileage. Um, I would think most people would want one with like less than twenty thousand miles on it and would probably expect to pay a small premium for that. Like I said. John, you used to be able to get the really nice ones for 120 or a little more. Now the really nice ones are bringing over 150. So with that in mind, I think this higher mileage car will slot into that old uh, space, you know, Agreed. where where they used to be. So I'm going to give you at 60. I think it's just going to it's going to barely like almost double. I'm going to give you 116 thousand dollars. It's a good bit. Where I think it will sell 116 to you, JP. I don't think it'll double the 60, but really close. Oh, man, I guess I'll park it just under you because of the miles. Uh, I thought these were pretty strong, but, yeah, I'll go buck ten and uh, say I want it. But uh, what do you think, Rami? I'm, I'm going to go a little higher and say, like, 123. I think there's a few people out there that are going to bid at last minute because the car is just so special. And if you know it, if you know the car, you're going to pay a little more for it. All right, Sahan, where are you at? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the same. I think that it's still going to be be a good deal anywhere if you're if you're within 25 uh, uh, or within a quarter of a hundred thousand this is a good deal and yes. it's a good car so i'll go you know i'll go 118 118 all right what's the nerd herd yeah. say gerd is at a buck 22 yeah, I agree. uh let's see randy b thinks 97063 okay he's a little bearish on this thing uh boot is at 116 right there where deeb's at uh v tel- v12s smooth is at <laughs> 115 uh all oh, good E46. numbers yeah look yeah. at that look at that yeah, look little... this guy. is that a super light or is that a just an m i can't CSL? yeah uh, it looks like, it looks a, like CSL. a csl bumper yeah yeah, yeah fancy yeah. all right so the guy knows dorks. his uh dork stuff yeah i mean no yeah. they're not dorks excuse me nerds. excuse me nerds. it's nerds thank you very much <laughs> i've seen the show it usually says right on my damn hat and i'm not wearing that because i'm the creative director Such so nerds. directing nerd uh yeah. all right uh everybody's got their numbers in right chris said 89 wow chris's chris's carbines at 89 that i think that'd be a steal chris wants to buy it for 89 yeah chris is putting a wholesale bid on it that's what he's doing. <laughs> exactly <laughs> Nice. All right. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. And uh, hopefully Randy is keeping track of the nerd herds bits. And uh, we'll be back on the next episode to reconcile that one. We still have another car, Michael D. What's left? Yeah, what is JB, left? We, cover, we do cover this model semi-regularly, but this one looked really nice. And, and look, anytime I see one in black, JP, I think of you. So here we go. Cars and Bids has a 2011 BMW 1M Ooh. with 16,000 original miles, six-speed Ooh. manual. Um, mm. You know, it's a three-liter <laughs> turbocharged inline six. Um, uh, explain it to me again, uh, Sahan. Doesn't this thing have two turbochargers? It's What's the horsepower? One starts for low end, and then the second one kicks in for high end, right? Ooh, variable. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I believe yeah. 300 and the- consecutive. Yeah, they're uh, yeah, in line. Thank yeah. you, JP. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Um, so it's a straight six. It's got 335 horsepower and 332 pound-foot of torque. 
that's before Sahan flashes it and gets like <laughs> 500 to the tires. Um, but um, yeah, really cool car, 19 inch wheels, short wheelbase, M diff, M suspension, M body kit. Uh, they only made this car for one year, and it has had a is it, cult following ever since. Is it since. automatic or stick? I'm sorry. No, they only come manual. Six-speed yep. manual. Oh. Yeah. I want so, this car. So these cars are hot. These cars drive, and, and look, this motor is, as I understand it, pretty bulletproof. It can handle a big build. You can change the turbo, the intercoolers, and flash Be the shit new out of for it and, BMW. And go high boost, and these cars will, will give you what you're looking for as far as horsepower, as I understand it. Um, but the, it, it's the driving experience. It's the first BMW of the modern age that really made people feel like drivers again. Mm. Um, and uh, and so as such, uh, despite what these cars sold for new, they've always brought a tremendous uh, value, a dollar amount in the secondary market. This one looked to be about as nice as, as one as we've ever covered, JP. Uh, and despite being on cars and bids, I think it's going to do really, really well. So, John, I lob it over to you. Uh, first of all, do you like the photos? I don't. I don't think the photos are particularly good. It's like they're trying real hard, but they're, mm. they're yeah. Not this is this, your car is poorly pictures. poorly presented, but it is kind of honest. Nice I mean, sometimes it's like okay, you, clearly the owners taking these pictures. They didn't hire someone. They did have it detailed, whatever. Um, but these are great cars, and you know, of the era. You know, its only real rival was a 997 Turbo or a GT3, and a lot. And I know people that had both at the time. Uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, Sahan, you'll remember, Dr. J, um, had his 997 Turbo, and he traded it in for one of these, and he preferred the the 1M. Um, I've never been lucky enough to drive one of these, so I'd really like to give it a shot. Um, Rami, you have, among many other cars, a 997 Turbo. Uh, would you consider trading this uh, that car for one of these? Never. He's like, nope. No, yeah. I really like this car a lot. I love the look of it. I love what it what it stands for. I love the manual transmission, the inline six with the turbo. Everything's cool about this car. I'd love to buy this car in addition to having my 997 turbo. Yeah, more is better, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing beats that car. Sahan, what do you think of these things? Uh, I think it's great when BMW does a wide body of anything. Um, and, you know, it's a built-up N54. At this point, despite having some issues in its early years, the N54, it now has, has been gone through. There's reliable ways to make big power with it. Yeah. Um, and, again, this is like a true BMW enthusiast car, which, is, car. which is super cool, right? And, um, and they keep, like, they're expensive compared to other cars, but when you look at the total of the market right now, I, I think they're not a terrible value. It's a good looking car, man. It really is. Yeah. Uh, Michael D, what's this thing going to bring? All right, JP. So our car closes tomorrow. It's currently sitting at $55,500 on 15 bids. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting, JP, because typically we see cars and bids. Most people sort of review, like reveal their, their bid, you know, days in advance and we don't see a big finish. But I, I, I cannot imagine a scenario where this car sells for under one hundred and ten thousand dollars, even what? on cars of bid. I actually think really? that the that the real buyers for this car are waiting until the auction closes to throw down. And so I am going to predict a a high number and a big furious finish for this car. Something the likes we don't typically see on the cars and bids platform. John, I, I this is a hundred and ten thousand dollar car, and I think it's going to bring it no matter what platform it's on. So that's my bid, 110. I know it might sound crazy, but I, I think I'll be vindicated tomorrow. So where are you at, John? Oh, boy. I, I just don't see that <laughs> happening. They're great cars, but I don't think they're worth that. Um, I, you know, and this is a great example, and but Doug usually brings decent numbers, not the premium numbers. Um, I do think this is the right platform for this car, actually. I mean, a 1M is kind of a weird, obscure sports car. Uh, and uh, being that there's not nearly as many cars on this platform as there are on BAT, it's not going to get lost, especially given that this car is not presented well. It doesn't have great photos like we were saying before, so it's going to have a hard time. This presentation would have a really hard time standing out on something like BAT. Uh, so I think yeah. it'll do well, but will it do a buck ten well? No, I don't think so. I'm going to say uh, $95,001 and uh, hand it off to Rami. Wow. There's only just so we know, JP, there's less than a thousand of these built for the world in uh, 2011. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a rare car by the number. 
And it's a good looking car and it's a fun car and it looks like it'd be really fun to drive and own and have. Um, I, I just, a hundred thousand. That's crazy. I think 89,000. That's where I'm at. 9,000. All right. Mm -hmm. Sahan, where are you at? Can I get a clarification? How many miles are on this exactly? 16,000. That is really low miles. Low miles. Yeah. Yeah, But I just don't. It's in Austin, Texas, by the way. I think I forgot. That I'm part. pretty sure I'm well, I mean, I, I know that I know that like last year when things were peaking, I, I think I saw some one of these sell for like $90,000 yeah, yeah. and like with even lower miles, I think this car is going to fall at like the $75,000 to the $80,000 wow, right. range, right. to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and bid. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bid $76,000 and go under everybody. Nice. Seventy six thousand. All right. Yeah. Well, the nerd herd seems to agree uh, or be a lot more bearish on this car. Uh, we've got bids. Carbine is at eighty nine thousand. George Condor is at a buck nine five. Uh, and Anthony up there in Spud Syndicate. Oh wait, no. Is that is that the last car or this car? Yeah, it might be. Uh, yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm I'm confusing the two here. Uh, but I think ninety two thousand. Sergeant Tom. Uh, let's see here. Randy B seventy seven thousand on the one M. Uh, Anthony Vera, this makes more sense. 87.5. Uh, Zach Miller is like 100 grand. What are you, crazy? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, totally. George Condor is at 81.5. Buddha's at 85. Zach Miller is pretty down on this car. 68 grand. Uh, V12. And it's on smooth. his platform. That's really uh, funny. Uh, 93,000. He knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Chris Carbine <laughs> at 72 grand. Uh, yeah. Gerd and uh, yeah, oh, Gerd's at eighty nine thousand bucks. Um, nice job, yeah, Gerd. so I eight, yeah, if it eight, breaks so Rami, Rami, Zach Miller writes, laugh out loud, a hundred thousand dollars question mark. And he goes, bruh, <laughs> <laughs> bruh, bruh, bruh. Zach's stating right now, he said one with forty thousand sold for forty eight five. Half the right. miles isn't pushing that high, and I, that's my feeling as well. I, right. I think but even finding a black one with low maybe. miles in good condition, I think people will overpay for it because there's just not they that might. many around that haven't been beat up. That's my opinion. Yeah, so that's why I'm great great and I'll be wrong. It's okay. I'm fine being wrong. I'll let you I mean, one. Well, I mean, sure that's what the nerds are all about is uh, guessing what will happen on these auctions. Will prices explode or implode? Find out on the next episode what happened with the results of these predictions and more. Uh, it is time to wrap it up. Big shout out to uh, thanking our guests, Sahan Fazi. Thanks for being here, buddy. My pleasure. Woo! Thanks for having me, guys. Persian Good. pillow. <laughs> Persian pillow. Yes. And of course, uh, Rami yeah. Mirza in the Rami studio. J Rami JP, studio. I have a question. I have, I have a question for you and Rami. Yeah. When, when you're like, it's late afternoon, we're going to do the show and you're thinking you want to invite Rami. Like, do you call him up and say, Hey, do you want to be on the show? And you invite him down to his own studio? Like, do you have to like, call him in? <laughs> like, like. Isn't he just always there because he's got his name on the door? I mean, no, I have to work. I have to contact JP and be like, "Can we do something?" God, I uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I invite him down because I know he cleans everything. He like gets all the hand wipes <laughs> and the clogs. Like this microphone smells funny, and he's got oh, he's like everything just gets like disinfected. Like, this it's microphone like, stinks. The only person that cleans more in here is my wife, and I don't know. It's like uh, yeah, no. Uh, have you been to my house? <laughs> oh my god! My That's interior decorator's like your house is cleaner than mine. I'm like, yeah, yeah well, whatever, man. You're gross. Like, I, mean, <laughs> I have a question for Rami, which is, <laughs> did you go look at that F15 that I sent you on Facebook Marketplace? <laughs> oh no, I sent it to J uh, JP. We totally forgot about it. Let's go, JP. The F15. There's an F15 for sale here the in Hender jet. in Henderson. The in fighter Henderson? jet. Let's go get it. Okay, well, it's on the way to Audi Henderson. We could stop at the yes. and look at the we'll G wagon, we'll tow it with uh, the G wagon, and, and tow the F fifteen on. No, you need to buy the Diablo and then, and then shoot, shoot the it with the F. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! We have a plan. Perfect. A when does Perfect. that Diablo Deep. close, Deep? <laughs> uh, oh shit! Um, you guys think we're kidding? Um, yeah, no. Uh, Stay tuned to the Rami Thursday. show for yeah. tomorrow. It closes tomorrow. It closes tomorrow. What time? We're gonna have to. Uh, I'm sure we can find another one. <laughs> it wouldn't be too hard. A beat up Diablo like this one? We'll just yeah, get a Fiero. Uh, we'll get a Fiero one. Yeah, we'll get a Fiero. It closes, one. It closes at 11.54. It closes at 11.54 tomorrow. 
All right. Uh, we are all heading to Air and Water uh, yes. at the end of the at the end of uh, April. So if you guys want to come with us, we have a hotel deal in Long Beach. We're all staying in Long Beach. That's uh, Costa Mesa adjacent, since that's where Air and Water is at. But we've got lots of cool stuff going on. There's a private invite drive. Um, there's uh, a little special party on. Friday night, and then there's an even more special party that's uh, Saturday night for someone's yeah. birthday. Uh, and then also mark your Some calendar uh, in Las Vegas for on May 16th. Uh, we will be announcing the rummy roast uh, <laughs> that is coming. Uh, that is going to be one hell of a show. That's going to be crazy. We're going to have to bring your own sauce to that, is that thing. Is that what <laughs> yeah. We're going to put an apple in your mouth, uh, rummy? Yeah, I, yeah it's going to be serious. Oh, my God. Everybody's willing to roast me. It's fine. It's good. It's gonna be a good yeah. time. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be a really time. good time. It's gonna be a good venue and a good time. And, yep. and uh, definitely gonna be televised or at least <laughs> recorded. We'll, we'll live stream that sucker. Yeah, All we'll right, guys. It. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, we will see you Sunday night with a brand new live episode. Oh, Make sure Sunday, you tune Sunday, in at six thirty. Sunday. Uh, that is right. We will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.